Hi guys, real quick before the video starts, please be sure to get your copy of my book, 12 Case Studies. Simply look at the description below. Okay, enjoy. Hey everybody, so I decided to try to do a vlog for you guys this time. Um, so I had a question that was asked on my channel and the question was, what's my favorite um, practice model? Um, what common diseases do I see? And, you know, some tips on therapeutic relationship with my patients. So I'm going to break this down in three parts because I really want to get in detail. But since I'm doing the vlog today, I'm going to make it fairly short. Um, so to add, to answer, since this is like a three part question, I'm going to answer your first um, question, which is what is my favorite um practice model. So I pretty much wrote it down. So my favorite, I would say that I would use all the time is the areas of occupation, um, which is your ADLs, IADLs, um, education, work, play, leisure, you know, because that's what I use um, really much, pretty much every day with my patients. We work on that practice model. Um, and then the next one I would have to say is um, do, 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 probably performance skills. And I kind of just wrote down some, some information on the breakdown of what really performance skills is. Um, pretty much like a refresher. So for performance skills, that's your motor and your praxis. And an example, um, an example of that is, you know, bending, reaching, pacing, coordination, um, maintaining balance, anticipation, adjusting posture. We tend to do a lot of that in skilled nursing facilities. We're working on motor, fine motor, gross motor um, control. So, you know, that is a performance skill. Another performance skill is your sensory and your um your sensory and your reciprocal. This is positioning of body in space, um, visual um, uh, visual location, hearing, timing, that kind of thing. That's more your sensory um, part of performance skills. The next one, emotional regulation. Man, I deal with that a lot. Okay, because when you work in this profession you are working with a very diverse group of personalities. Let's say that. Um, so this has to do with, you know, controlling anger, um, helping stress, regulating emotion, um, utilizing coping skills, um, responding to feelings appropriately, helping your patients regulate those feelings appropriately, and um, I could probably give you guys a, an example of that. I have, I had a patient and this kind of falls in a little bit too with therapeutic use of self, but I had a patient and he was a kind of guy where he needed to be in control. And I realized he had difficulty when it, he was working with um, men that also had a dominant personality because I found that they were like talking over each other and he was like, but listen, this is what I want to do. This is what, I... and I kind of had to take a step back and really observe the situation and kind of pay attention to his mannerisms and the way I use therapy, therapeutic use of self and also incorporate emotional regulation was giving him time to finish his sentences, listening, listening very carefully to what his requests are. And then once he was done telling him, okay, let me just educate you. Okay. For a moment. Um, and then I would educate him and I would make sure I would talk very slowly. Um, and even when he interrupted me, I kind of, sorry guys, I had like a, a fly just like came in from the camera. Even when he interrupted me, I kind of just allowed him to interrupt me and listen to what he had to say. And then I continued. 
I didn't say, hold on, hold on, let me finish. I didn't do that because I know sometimes therapists is like, if you just let me finish, you can understand and we can get going and we can get the job done. But sometimes you just have to allow that time to go. You got to be patient. Um, I know sometimes we work on like a time clock in our minds and it was like, oh, time is up. See you later. And sometimes we just can't do that. We really have to build a rapport with our patients because you most likely will probably get that same person again. So it's best that the first interaction is the best interaction. Um, so back to the story, I listened to him and we started to build a relationship because then he started saying, you know what, you really listen well. And I'm like, okay, so now I need for you to get up and do A, B, and C. And then he re responded to it. And then, you know, um, when he started, um, you know, going on, a little bit on a tangent or he was in pain, I was like, okay, I would explain everything I was about to do. Okay, I'm going to move your arm like this. I'm going to move your leg like this. I need for you to position, position like this. And I made sure I explained everything to him. And by doing so, that kind of allowed him to kind of regulate his emotions. That calmed him down and it also built a level of, um, what's the word I'm looking for? A level of trust. That's the trust. Um, the other performance skill is cognitive. Since I work in skilled nurse, skilled nursing facility, I deal with that cogn cognitive um, issues all the time. Cognitive deficits, cognitive impairments, whatever you want to call it, I'm dealing with it because I tend to have um, patients with dementia. Um, but it's not only just dementia patients. Everyone has some kind of cognitive cognition skill that needs to be worked on or can be improved and this includes judgment um selecting sequencing organizing planning multitasking um creativity you know so this all falls under cognitive cognitive and then the last one out of performance skills is um communication skills and socialization so so this is being able to um your gestures um, maintaining acceptable space, um, initiating and answering, taking actions, um, acknowledgement. Again, I mentioned that when I was talking about the gentleman I had, really acknowledging his feeling, really showing that I cared, not just um, listening for a second and, and then telling him, okay, so this is what I need for you to do. Because that that's just not going to work. And I really want to elaborate more on therapeutic use of self since that was the question that I received. Um, so I hope I answered your question for that first part. What's my favorite practice model? Again, I said it's the um, areas of occupation. That is your ADL, IDLs, education, work, leisure, sleep, etc. That all falls under that practice model. And then you have the performance skills, which is what I mentioned. That was your motor skills, um, your, your sensory, emotional. Um, those are all that fall under performance skills. Now, your question was, you know, what's my practice model? And that's what a practice model is. I'm not sure if you were, you meant to say frame of reference, because frame of reference is a little different. When you talk about frame of reference, you're talking about, um, you know, cognitive, behavioral, um, biomechanical, those kind of things. If that is what you were referencing to, I can make a video for that. And um, a lot of us don't really talk about those. We kind of just learn it because it's theory, but they do play a part in your interactions. You just don't think about it. So anyway, this is getting really long. So I'm going to stop right here. Um, please be sure to like, share, subscribe. This is so different for me because I'm doing a vlog and I normally don't do these, but maybe I will so I can really get content out faster and be able to answer your questions. I have some good news coming up. You guys are going to really love it. Um, I am creating a consultation scheduling system. I will give you more details about it where you can um, just schedule time with me. If you want to get on the phone with me, we can have a great 30 minute conversation. All you have to do is fill out a couple of questions and then you can ask away and I will help you. Um, I'm also going to provide a service where I can help you guys out while you're in school. This is for all my students. Um, you know, if you, let's say you have a paper to write or there's a test coming up or, or even, um, MBCOT exam, whatever it is, I am offering, um, services as well. Um, 
it is going to be at a little uh, at a cost but I'll make sure it is affordable um, where I can block up some time to really have interaction with you and help you out, help you pass, help you become the best OT possible. All right, guys, take care and be sure to like, share, and subscribe. All right. And by the way, let me know if you guys like my blog because I can make sure I do a lot more of these and I can get the content out so much faster. All right. See you guys later.